Well, look who is joining me. It's 102.9 The Buzz. I'm Haley St. John, back in the Buzz Studios. Haven't really been seeing much of this place anymore, but I am joined with Kevin from Candlebox. How you doing, man? I'm good. I'm uh, trying to um, stay out of the heat of Los Angeles because it's a little bit warm out here right now. So I'm in uh, in the guest house where the guitars hang and, you know, just doing my thing. We're kind of having the opposite issue here in Nashville because it finally feels like salt, fall. I have my long sleeves on and it's great. <laughs> I see yeah. one mm -hmm. leaf fall off the trees and everybody starts freaking out and getting so excited. But yeah. what, what have you been up to? What's What's good? I know we can only do so much these days, but... What's been going on with you? Uh, just, you know, um, I guess playing music and releasing songs and um, being a dad and a husband and teaching and, you know, all those kinds of things go along with being quarantined. And um, yeah, you know, just trying to do our part, making, making life a little bit easier on ourselves, I suppose, by, you know, staying in and and uh, staying close to uh, friends that we know are doing the same thing we're doing. But yeah, it's tough. You know, I'm supposed to be out on the road right now and I'm not. I would I would give anything to be out there touring right now. Right. No kidding. Yeah, it's one of those things is like you realize how special what you do for a living really is. You know, it's like you're going to appreciate <laughs> it that much more. And it's like, oh, my God, what am I going to do now that I can't do what I love? You know, um, yeah. you have a new song out, though, which is great. So you're still doing what you love to do, which is writing, recording, releasing music, right? Yeah, you know, that's that's the the good part about the job is that I'm able to kind of, you know, make a living doing that still somehow sort of way. But uh, this record has been done since January. So it's um, a little frustrating because it was supposed to come out last month. Um, and, uh, you know, Corona's kind of thrown a, a big wrench in everything for, you know, not only us but you know everyone really and um so yeah just you know we released a song just to kind of wet people's palettes and let them know that the record's done and it will be out soon sometime next year um it's one of my favorite songs i've ever written i wrote it with peter cornell uh who's chris's older brother and i've known pete you know since the 90s in seattle but never wrote with him so this is the first time i, I collaborated with him and I'm, I'm really really happy with the song i think it's i think it's rad yeah, I've been listening to it earlier and it's really cool. It has like that almost bluesy and kind of rock sound to it, which mm -hmm. I love. And the fact that you got to write it with Chris Cornell's brother too is kind of adds a little bit of a cool factor, you know, but yeah, just a little bit, a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> seeing that name on there um, yeah. since COVID and lockdown and quarantine, how is that? Obviously, it's affected um, the album process the touring process everything but what are some things that you've had to do differently in preparation for this song and for this album well really it's just been about marketing um you know trying to trying to let people know that that there's something coming um you know we're one of the first things we did when all of this kind of lockdown started happening uh was in in april got on the phone with my agent and my um my label pavement um, Mark and Tim over at Payment and my manager, Amy, and said, how do we release a record in a pandemic? Um, and the, the answer was, you don't. Um, simply because we don't have the financial backing behind us that a major label would have if, you know, if Taylor Swift were releasing a record like she did with Folklore, um, where you know that it's going to be everywhere and that you can spend a million dollars to make sure that, you know, two, three million people know that there's a record out. Um, in our case, we have to be very, very um, cautious with the way we spend the money and, uh, and um, you have to be very smart about how you market it. So, that's really been, you know, the, the biggest change because like the last record disappeared in airports, we were on the road, the record came out, we were able to tour on it and people were buying the album in this cycle. Um, we can't really release that record until we can tour on it and support it. Um, it would be stupid for us to do that just because there's no way to let an audience know that there's a record out there other than social networking. We don't have, you know, millions of followers on Instagram or Facebook or anything like we got a couple hundred thousand. Um, but, you know, that doesn't mean they're checking it every single day to, to, you know, see which one of us is picking our nose. You know, um, it's really kind of like, oh, yeah, Candlebox, they were supposed to be releasing a song, you know. So that's kind of how it happens with us. And and we need to just be very, very careful about, um, 
you know, how we how we let that uh, audience know that this record's coming out and that this is the single that's out now. It's more so about doing these types of interviews, Zoom interviews and, and radio phone calls. The response to the song has been amazing, which makes it easy now to talk about. Um, and hopefully people are listening and paying attention to not only what we're doing, but what you're doing, what radio is doing in general right now to, to kind of get the word out that bands are releasing new music. I've always thought that was really interesting because I had uh, Sean from Cedar come in a couple months back and they just released an album and they decided to go for it. You know, he said, there's not a bad time to release an album. He said, you know, it's kind of a gamble because we don't get to go out on tour and help promote it right now. Um, so some bands are like, you know, why not? Let's just release it. It's done. Let's, let's just go for it. Um, but then other bands are like, oh, hell no, we got to wait until this craziness is over. So I always thought that was kind of interesting on the different mindsets and how uh, different bands are kind of approaching it, too. I thought that was kind well, of Sean, Sean's very smart. And um, and see, there's, a, you know, uh, obviously got a, a fantastic fan base. Um, I'm a huge fan of those guys. And uh, and I think that when I saw that they were releasing that record, I initially was like, yeah, that seems like exactly what Cedar would do would be just like, you know, fuck it, let's go for it. Um, but at the same time, I was like, man, I, I, I really hope that this record has legs to carry this band until next year. Because um, if it doesn't, you know, people don't have money to spend. Of course, everybody's streaming music anyways, whether it's Spotify or whatnot, but you really still need to sell some sort of physical product. And unless their pre-orders were in the, somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 to 60,000 uh, units, I don't see how that record's going to survive. I Fingers crossed it does, because like I said, I love Seether, and I think Sean's a genius. I love Dale to death. Uh, John's a fantastic drummer. Um, and, and I think the band deserves all the success that they've um, received and that's, that's coming their way, obviously. But I just really hope that that wasn't a stupid decision because rock and roll is the one form of music, I think, right now that has to tour. Country doesn't have to, pop music doesn't have to, um, R&B doesn't have to, hip hop doesn't have to, but rock and roll, that's, that's really the foundation of what our audience strives for is going to that concert, losing their minds, banging their heads and, you know, screaming the words out at us. And I don't really see anybody doing that right now in their car, you know, listening to a record. Um, cause they're not, I mean, unless they're going to work and maybe that's possible, but and I did, I did download the see the record. I think it's amazing. Um, but it, it uh, you know, I, I thought that they were um, overly optimistic releasing that record. And I hope that I'm wrong, you know, because I, like I said, I love them. And I think that the, that I think this record's really great. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. It's uh, maybe it's just all the years that I've had in the business that I'm a little bit more cautious about that sort of thing. Sure. Well, you don't want to look back, you know, in the next five, 10 years and be like, man, I, I love this album so much, but we released it during a pandemic and it didn't do very well because of that. You know, you don't want to look back and have that, that mindset about an album that you released. So. No, exactly. And, you know, we've done that. We didn't, you know, we didn't do that really with the pandemic, but like with Lucy, when we released that record, we, you know, we were stupid to release that record at the time. There was so much going on with Alanis Morissette and the Deftones with Maverick Records um, that it was, you know, stupid for us to um, think that, you know, because of the success of our first record, this one was just going to blow up and go where it needed to go. Um, you know, so uh, it's, it happens sometimes where you make those mistakes and, you know, it's a hard lesson to learn. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So back um when the world is kind of back to normal, what's uh, Candlebox going to do like in the meantime? Because we're all, you know, every, everything is really uncertain right now. We don't know if it's going to be, you know, two months from now that everything is okay, two years from now. So what's what's kind of on tap for Candlebox until we get this all figured out? Well, you know, we're doing these cover songs. Um, we did um, For What It's Worth by Buffalo Springfield. Um, the plan is to do 12 to 13 more um, and release those as a uh, kind of a gift with the record um and they're all kind of you know songs about the times what's you know what's happening right now but they're our favorite songs by our favorite bands um so that's keeping us busy and and you know hopefully when this does kind of you know when there is a vaccine we're able because right now you can't get insurance to tour that's the real issue is that insurance companies won't give you money to go out there on the road and, and insure a venue or anything like that so um when that is all kind of cleared up um i'll be on the road for uh, you know, a minimum of eight months, um, which, you know, that's, that's just 
because of the time that's been lost, you know, you, you're, there's so many people that are going to want to see live music and there's, you know, so many bands that are, that are going to want to get out there and play. Um, you know, it's really going to be scheduling and venues, you know, when can you get booked? Um, is there an opportunity on a Friday night, not a Sunday night, you know, those type that, those types of things you have to really consider when you go out on the road. So, um, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm very picky about that sort of stuff. I sit and, and chat with my agent about it um, to make sure that he's doing exactly what I want and how I want it to go. Um, so I guess that would be, you know, really right now it's the game plan is for us to figure out what is the best routine um, starting up when we can next year. Um, so there's, you know, there's several things that are uh, in front of us that we're, you know, uh, going through and the opportunities that um, will be made available to the band. Uh, but really it's, uh, it's just about finishing these cover songs and, and keeping ourselves healthy so that we can hit the road next year. Sure. Yeah. Um, before I let you go, uh, what are you listening to now? You mentioned you were doing cover songs, which is cool. I love that bands are doing that. And I've noticed that a lot of uh, different artists and bands have been doing that since things got crazy. Um, but what are you listening to now? Like what's good if you have any recommendations? Well, I don't listen to a lot of um, new rock and roll. I listen to a lot of kind of obscure stuff and uh, classical vinyl, um, you know, like Boz Guides is one of my favorite. I listen to, to a lot of um, his stuff. Um, right now, the new stuff I'm listening to, um, you know, it's like Matt Benninger from from the Nationals got a new record that's coming out, um, which I'm excited about. I love the Nationals, one of my favorite bands. Um, a band the war on drugs um there's the band uh, the whole damn mess that um is out of florida that tour with us a lot that i really really love they've got a new record that's coming out um yeah i'm just kind of i'm i listen to pretty obscure stuff i mean uh tame impala is like one of my favorite bands i you know um blood orange i don't know if you've ever heard of him uh brilliant uh social artist um fantastic songs and um r&b vein um gary clark jr i love gary clark jr i've been listening to a lot of uh his records so it, it's really just the stuff that i love that uh, you know kind of makes me feel a little bit better about life and and um and uh and where we're at right now as a society i'm trying to um I'm trying to find the good in people and and looking for that um empathetic spirit that I know I have and, and having empathy for what's going on in the world. So um, I look for songs that, that help me remember that and, um, and, and can help guide that emotion for me. Sure. Well, that's the thing too. I mean, if I ask somebody like, what are you listening to now? It's not like the typical stuff that you hear. It's I'm going to mention all these bands that you've never heard of before. They're really great. You know, that's what I love about, you know, I, I love asking that question for that reason. And that's good because everybody has so such a unique and eclectic taste in music like that. So that's great. Yeah. Um, your new album is Wolves, which comes out uh, date next year, Sherman, next year sometime, 2021. Yeah. Uh, Let Me Down Easy is an awesome song too. Congratulations Thank on Thank you. getting that done. Um, I'll have a link to that in my blog as well. But Kevin, thank you so much for joining me and we'll see you soon, hopefully. Oh, the pleasure's all mine. It's great chatting with you. Thanks for having me. Thanks.